Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. I hope you're doing well this morning, and I hope you had a good night's rest. As we go through today, I pray that the Lord will continue to be with us, and may His Spirit guide us and keep us throughout the day. Our reading today comes to us from Psalm 143, reading verses 1 to 12, and it says, Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me, my heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old, I meditate on all thy works, I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee, as a thirsty land, Selah. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth, hid not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know thy way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Twelve and last says, And of thy mercy cut off mine enemies, and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for another portion of his word. And as we read, I pray that the Holy Spirit will empower us and may he open our hearts that what we read, we will seek to apply and grow. Now, Psalm 43 is a heartfelt prayer that is uttered by King David. He expressed his deep distress and anguish in the face of his enemy and his adversities. Now, throughout the psalm, David wrestled with the feeling of despair and hopelessness, but ultimately he find comfort and solace in turning to God. We can also relate to David's experience in some ways, or in a lot of ways. His example can be a guide to us to remind us that our only hope is turning to Jesus. In the beginning verses, David acknowledges his own unworthiness and his sinful nature. He recognized that no one can stand righteous before God and their own merit. We are all sinners and we come short of the glory of God. And so we can only stand as God give us grace and mercy because we have nothing in us to really offer to God except to surrender to him so that he can make us into his likeness. And so David pleads with God for mercy and ask him not to judge him according to his action. So yes, he knows that whatever he did, it deserves punishment or it comes with consequences but he's asking God to have mercy on him to be lenient with him so David goes on to describe the oppressive situation that he faces with the enemy pursuing him and his soul feeling so overwhelmed and desolate sometimes we feel that way you know when people constantly on our back you know we feel so drained sometimes so depressed and that longing for relief from that person or from 
that situation. You know, but despite his despair, he turns to God and acknowledge him as his refuge and source from deliverance. So he doesn't take the, the entire time focusing on what he's experienced, but he turned to God who is able to rescue him from what he's going through. And so we ourselves need not to dwell so much on our situation and what we are experiencing because we have a help in God. And so we need to look to him who is able to save us, our refuge and our strength, Christ Jesus. Amen. So he continued to express a spiritual renewal and guidance from God. He asked God to what? teach him his will. So not David will, you know, but God will and lead him where? In the path of righteousness. And that is what we need to ask of God also, you know, that he teach us his will and so that we can walk after his principles and not our own. Amen. So his desperation for God to, to rescue him from his adversity and to extinguish his inner turmoil. So he's going through a lot and he's just asking God for relief. We can relate. Now, despite the circumstances that he described here, the Psalms end with a note of hope and trust in God's unfailing love and faithfulness. So we have that hope that God will be faithful towards us, that he will come through for us. So deliverance will come. And so what we need to do is to continue to wait and to trust in him. And David declares his intention to wait. So he understood that, yes, he need rescue and relief from his situation, but he also understand that he has to wait on God. Timing. And the same goes for us. We have to wait sometimes. We have to wait sometimes. Because as they say, God timing is always the right timing. Amen. And so we just need to, to continue to have confidence in God that he will answer our prayer. Now, the overall sentiments of the psalm is reflecting on our human experience and suffering and the despair and the enduring hope we find in seeking God's mercies and guidance. And it illustrates the profound trust and reliance that we as believers place in God, even in the dark moments of our life. So this psalm, it testify and speak of our human experience as we endure difficulties in our life. But it also points us to hope in God. So there is a brighter day that is coming. There is relief that is coming. But we have to wait. God will come through for us. And so may we continue to trust him and may we continue to depend on him and seek him and wait patiently till he come through for us. God bless you and have a wonderful rest of the day. Amen.